Hey guys, this is Balu from Balu Prime and once again welcome you all back for an exciting tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how we can create this kind of 3D loop animations in Blender easily. So hope you guys will find this tutorial useful but before going to that, if you end up liking this video, please click on that like button to share this content and if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing to my channel and support me. And by the way, if you like short 3D simulation videos, you can check out my second channel, link in the description. So now without any further ado, let's start today's video. So here I'm using Blender 3.3, nice. So first of all, let's select everything in this default sign by pressing A on the keyboard and delete. So now let's create a sine wave root. So for that you can use either curves. So in order to use curves, go to this add, select curve and you can select either path or you can select this Bezier curve. So here I will select this Bezier. So press one for front view. So press tab on the keyboard for edit mode, select this vertex, press G and let's place this point here now select this edge press e on the keyboard and place this here now press e and again place this curve here so like this you can create the sine wave or else you can do it easily so i will show you that so let's delete this one so further go to this add before that we need to enable some inbuilt add-on so go to this edit come to this preferences in add-ons look for extra object so simply such as extra here you can see we got this add mesh extra objects right by default this will be unchecked enable it and save those preferences after that go to this add or else you can press shift a come to this mesh and here you can select this math function so in that select this z match surface so expand the function here here delete this equation okay just type sign brackets open brackets x and bracket close so if i press enter now here you can see we got this plain surface right if you want to increase this size let's increase it in x area so now you can see we are getting that sine wave loop so let's increase this x subdivision so 256 is fine and right click shade smooth nice so if you want to add some thickness onto this select this mesh so this is mesh it is not a curve so select the mesh come to this modifier properties add modifier and add solidify modifier so increase this thickness here so i think this much is fine and let's apply this apply this one so now here you can see we got this sine wave path with thickness so let's press tab on the keyboard for edit mode Control r and let's add a loop here and here also Control r and add a loop here nice so now we got our path so now let's add a uv sphere so go to this add mesh select this uv sphere here so z z and let's place this here so select this press one on the keyboard for front view so let's reduce the scaling press s and reduce the scaling here uh, i think okay let it be here so right click and shade smooth so now let's apply the scaling option so select this sphere go to this object apply apply scale so for this mesh also so select this path object apply apply scale nice so let's apply rigid properties onto this both objects so first let's select this uv sphere come to this physics property add rigid body so type let it be active and shape i will change this to sphere okay now if i play this you can see the sphere will be falling down so we need to make this sine wave path as a colliding object so select this mesh apply rigid body but type change it to passive so now if i play this you can see it is colliding but is not acting properly so for that we need to change the shape values so come to the shape options and change it to mesh so now if i play this you can see the sphere is rolling but it is not passing through this curve so let's add an external force so for that we'll be using wind so go to this add come to this force field and add wind here so let's rotate it here along 90 degree so let's increase the strength so i will increase the strength to 50 so this is the manual check kind of thing so let's place this wind here and let's move it here so now if i play this still it is not making the ball to flow through this curve so we need to check this manual so i will increase the strength to 100 and let's check this so now if i play this so definitely it is acting and it is not making the ball to pass through the curve 
so let's do one thing so at the starting frame we don't want any strength so i will make this zero so add a keyframe by clicking on this i spot or else you can press i on the keyboard and after i think let's check this where the ball hits that plane okay so at 20th frame i will make this like 150 and add a keyframe so now if i play this now you can see the ball is passing through the curve nice so now in order to make this loop first we need to check the frame where it is touching this plane so at this frame it is touching this plane so it is 19th frame i will change this to 19th and let's move forward and check the last frame so okay so here i want to end that so i will change this to 170 so 170 nice so we got this start and end from 19 to 170 so now first we need to bake this simulation so come to this scene properties here expand this rigid body world so come to this cache option so here simulation we need to start that from 19 and i just want till 170 frames okay so now click on this bake button so now the baking is done and if you want we can remove this external force so let me select this wind and let's remove that one so since we have baked the simulation we don't need that further so now we can see we got our animation nice so let's add some materials onto this so first let's select this USPA. let's move on to this material viewport and click on the shading tab so here we got this pair right so click on this new now select this principal bsdf and press ctrl plus t for node wrangler and by the way if you're not enabled node wrangler go to this edit preferences in add-ons look for node just simply such as node here by default this will be unchecked enable it save those preferences okay close it after that select this principal bsdf and press ctrl plus t to get this node wrangler so now we can map any of the textures onto this uv sphere so let me select a metal grunge texture so open so here i will be selecting this metal grill so open mage and now you can see we got that so if you want to increase this mapping we need to increase the scaling so let's increase this to five and five and let's say this so now we can see we are getting some texture kind of thing but it is not properly mapped onto the sphere so let's do one thing press tab on the keyboard for edit mode press a to select all the vertices if any of the vertices is not selected after that, press u on the keyboard select this smart uv project and ok so now it will be unwrapped correctly nice so after that let's select this mesh add new material select this principal bsdf ctrl plus t and from here i will select any wood texture open and for this also we need to press tab on the keyboard for edit mode press a on the keyboard to select all the faces or vertices press u on the keyboard and select this smart uv project and hit ok so if i press tab to exit this edit mode you can see we got that texture here so let's increase the scaling so select this x scale and increase this to 5 and y scale increase this to 5 now we got some texture so let's move back to this layout once again now let's move on to this render viewport so here the scene is looking dark because there is no light in the scene so let's add some light in the scene so go to this world properties color and add environment texture so from here i will be using an hdri which i have downloaded from polyheaven it is a free source to download hdri maps so click on this open and let me select the hdr so here i will be selecting this hdr open image now we got some light in the scene so here i don't want the background to be appearing in the render so if you want you can leave that if you don't want come to this render settings scroll down come to this film options and enable this transparent option so that we won't get that background visible while rendering so let me enable this ambient occlusion and distance let it be 5 and enable the screen space reflections and the reflections also so nice so now let's move on to the rendering process so for that in order to render this we need to add a camera in the scene so go to this add camera so camera is added so in order to view through camera we can press zero on the keyboard so it will place the camera as we are seeing through that so here i don't want to change the view so Control alt zero 
so it will snap that camera view here so press n on the keyboard come to this view options and lock this 3d cursor and camera to view option so now we can place this here so let's add a background so go to this add mesh select a plane here press s and increase the scaling and r x 90 so now press z and y to move in y axis here so i think i will place this here so let's add some color onto the background so select this background come to this material properties add new material and from the base color i will change it to somewhat like okay somewhat like green light green so nice fine so now if you want to add some sunlight in the scene to get the shadows you can do that so go to this add light sun so let's increase this strength value to 5 press r and rotate it here so now let's move on to the rendering portion so come to this render properties here render engine let it be ev if you want to render in cycles you can do that but it will take more time when compared to ev so render samples i will leave this to 64 you can increase if you want so i think rest of things is okay here now move to this output properties so resolution full hd is fine enable this render region crop to render region frame rate here you can change so i will leave this to 24 only so here start from i will change this to 20 okay so 22 170 is fine so here we need to select a folder where we can save these output files so i will select a folder so here i have selected a folder to save these output files so file format if you want to render in jpeg or png you can do that if you want to render in jpeg here or else if you want to directly render in video format you can select this ava jpeg so here i will render this in jpeg format so i will select this jpeg so quality i will change this to 100 percent okay so once everything is done come to this render and click on this render animation so this starts to render our images so in this way we can do this kind of loop animations in blender easily so hope you guys have learned something new from this tutorial if you have learned anything new please like share and subscribe my channel to support me so we'll meet in the next video. Until then, signing off. Take care. Bye.